Hello everybody, this is Pharmacist D and welcome back to part 2 of Hydration for Health. So in part 1 we talked about um, some of the recommendation regarding to drinking water. Why, why do we have to drink 6 to 8 glasses of fluid? In today's video, we'll be exploring on some of the factors that affect how much we should be drinking every day. The weather. Yes, in England we love talking about the weather. This can be the temperature, the wind, the rain. This one can be a tricky one because most of us will drink a bit more water or fluid when it comes to warm weather, when we're playing in the sun, when we tend to sweat a little or sweat a lot. So many of my consultations in the winter involve in reminding people to drink a bit more, especially when we're turning on heaters and we become dry a lot quicker. Location. So where do you live? Or where are you? High on the hill was a lonely go herd. Yes, that's right. If we live high on a hill or in the mountains or if we're on a plane. I know, just a memory for some, at least for me anyway. When we're at high altitude, we increase the loss of water. So you will need to drink more if you're in a high altitude. Your diet, what you drink and what you eat. This is the juicy bit, literally. Let's start with food. How much water you get from food depends on the type of food you eat. Fruit and vegetables are particularly rich in water. For example, cucumber is 96% water. Tomato, mushroom, watermelon. But people often don't relate food like meat, fish, eggs with water. Depends on how these are cooked, they have actually a relatively high water content. A boiled egg is 75% water. Even pizza contains more water content than what I expected. I guess it also depends on what topping you put on it. Pizza is about 40-49% to 49 water. Now this is not telling you to binge on pizza and then don't drink. In sedentary people, so those don't move a lot during the day, whether it's because of ill health or personal choice, um, those couch potatoes. <clears throat> So daily fluid intakes from food is thought to account for 20-30% to 30 in sedentary people. So people who get a low amount of water through food need to drink more. Logic, right? So if you want to drink less water, then eat your fruit and veg. And that goes for the opposite. So if you're eating food that is more spicy, more salty uh, or more sugary, then you'll need to drink more water. Now drinks. Often when I say drink a bit more and sometimes I would hear people going alcohol. My reply to that is often drink more water. But other drinks such as caffeinated drinks and mild alcoholic drinks do count in terms of hydration, at least in moderation. Alcohol should be limited to no more than 14 units a week. Now this is definitely not telling you to binge on high calorie drinks, caffeinated or alcohol drinks just because a cup or two of your teas, coffee, juice, milk, beer, wine still counts towards your water intake. Don't forget about the effect on the caffeine, the alcohol, the sugar are still there despite the water content. So let's talk about these caffeinated drinks. One of the city myths that I like to bust today is caffeinated drink that doesn't help you to hydrate because caffeine is a diuretic. Diuretic basically means things that make you go to the toilet and pee a bit more. To be fair, the diuretic effect on these beverages is relatively weak in moderation, but they can cause extra urination in some people. However, even caffeinated drinks helps your body to add water overall. Maybe tea over coffee, decaffeinated drinks rather than the caffeinated drinks. And if that is the only thing you're willing to drink, I guess it's better than nothing. Energy drinks and sports drinks. These can be useful if you're doing high level of endurance sports and need an energy boost. These often contain high level of caffeine and are often high in sugar and therefore high in calories. These may also contain other stimulants or other vitamins and minerals uh, and other herbal substances. Check the labels of these drinks as these often say the drink is not suitable for children or pregnant women. Sugar, sugar, sugar. Many soft drinks contain high in sugar. It is one of the main contributors to excess sugar intake for us in the UK. Fruit juice and smoothie also counts towards your fluid intake. But the Eat Well guidance suggests that you should not exceed 150 mils per day, which is not a lot. So this is what 150 mils of liquid looks. 
dioxide. And 150 mils is still likely to contribute to a very big percentage of your daily sugar allowance. So what do you do? So think of the last time you had a juice or smoothie. A standard can is usually 330 mil and that is more than a double of the 150 mil um, recommendation. So if you have a can of juice or a bottle of smoothie, because I haven't seen smoothie in a can, um, if you have more than 300, then I suggest you sharing it. Share it with me. If you're ordering from a juice bar, then I would suggest you to order the smallest size because um, even the smallest size is probably more than 150 mil. And think, and think about diluting it. Better is to fill up your water at home. Why this is, is when fruit and vegetables are juiced or blend, the sugar becomes what we call free sugar. We Literally, they are free like Dobby. Because most of the fiber are removed, making the sugar free to be absorbed into the bloodstream a lot quicker. And you tend to overdo it without thinking. For example, you probably won't eat three apples in a sitting, but you can drink its juice in one glass of apple juice without feeling full. Water. Drink water, of course. There are many reasons why water is still the best choice. What can boost your water intake than water itself? Water is the best drink in terms of hydration. It is 100% water. It is relatively cheap, well, tap water. I have seen a bottle of mineral water that is over 200 pounds. It has no calories, it has no sugar. If you don't like the taste of plain water, try adding a bit of lemon or lime or a bit of squash or juice. One fact that I came across from Dr. Margaret McCartney's article, in 2011, in the UK, the British Bottled Water Industry website described a year-on-year -year rise in bottled water consumption which now exceeded 33 litres annually per person. So I wonder what it is now. Of course, last year was an odd year. I found in 2018, approximately, the 33 litres has increased to 44.9 litres. So surely this means more people are choosing water. Not necessarily, because we are talking about bottled water. It's good that in a way that people are choosing water as opposed to soft drinks. But as an environmental conscious pharmacist, I would like to recommend that we use our own reusable bottle or containers to fill it up with tap water and take it wherever. Physical activities. So we talked about sedentary people. If this sedentary person was doing Zumba a day compared to a day where one is sitting in front of a computer working frantically, then of course on the day when I'm doing Zumba, I will need more water. Or if you consistently don't shut up, then I need to drink more water. So if you're exercising or doing intensive uh, manual or physical activity, then you will need to drink more water, even if you don't sweat a lot. And if you do, then more of a reason to drink. And please, a shout out to the workaholics, uh, naming a few professionals with no evidence and sorry for overgeneralizing, nurses, long distance drivers, retail staff, please rest, rehydrate and refuel and that means take your break, drink and eat. Your health status and built. If you have a bigger body mass you need to drink more fluid. If you have an infection or a fever or if you're losing fluid for vomiting and diarrhea then you need to replenish this fluid and sometimes you need to replenish fluid plus salt and this is where you need to see a doctor or a pharmacist. And don't forget 20 to 30 percent of person's fluid intake is through food so people with a reduced appetite need to drink more. If you have a health condition like diabetes, you might need to drink more water. Some medication like diuretic can also make you lose more water. Some people are required to follow a strict fluid restriction. So please speak to your healthcare professionals if you have any question regarding to fluid intake on your medical conditions. If you have a bigger body mass, then you'll need more fluid. This is also true for pregnancy. Or breastfeeding. If you're pregnant or nursing your baby, then you'll need to drink extra water to stay hydrated. After all, your body is doing work for two or three or more. Okay, so we need to consider all these factors to determine how much I should drink a day. 
but when do I drink? Is there a best time to drink? Is it better to drink it all in eight settings? Let's take a break from here and stay tuned for part three. And meanwhile, if you haven't already, please subscribe, like and share. Bye bye! Au revoir!